Thank you very much for the welcome. Hardest thing that I ever had to do in my entire life. I was 14 years of age. And the hardest thing I ever had to do was to walk behind my father's coffin as a boy. He had been shot dead. He was a police officer. And the IRA took him out one Saturday afternoon. The hardest thing I ever had to do was to walk behind his coffin that Wednesday afternoon. The second hardest thing I ever had to do in my entire life was to leave this church some nine years ago. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that. That was the second hardest thing I ever had to do in my entire life. In fact, if I'm honest, it absolutely broke my heart and tormented me inside. But sometimes you just have to do what God tells you to do. And if you had told me that's what was going to happen when I turned up here in the July of 2008, I never would have believed you that I would leave after a few years. But that's what God had ordained. But hey, who knows what God still has for the future? Amen. Amen. Take your Bible, will you, and turn with me to Ephesians chapter 3. Again, can I thank uh, the session, the oversight of this church for allowing me to be here tonight on a wonderful weekend of celebration for this church and this congregation. Thank you, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, really, for allowing us to be here tonight. I want to speak to you uh, on the subject, have you got it in you to go again? That's my subject tonight. This subject is for the pastor of this church. It's for the session of this church. It's for the members of this church. It's for the young people of this church. It's for the not so young of this church. It's for the musicians. It's for the visitor. Have you got it in you to go again? Let's read these couple of verses. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 and verse 21. And then we'll get down to the study. Paul writes, Now to him who is able... To him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray, shall we? Come, Holy Spirit, thou art so welcome in this place. Word of God, speak. Speak to every life, every heart, every mind, every soul, every spirit. And I pray that, gracious Lord, you'll speak tonight to this church in a marvelous way. For Jesus' sake. Amen. So, you tell me tonight that you've got nothing left in the tank. So you tell me you've failed. And you tell me you've let the Lord down. You tell me that you're going to give up. You're going to give up because you've been hurt. You're going to raise the white flag because someone has let you down. You tell me tonight that you just can't go on anymore. I want you to listen to the following story. As a boy, his family were forced out of their home. And as a boy, he had to go out to work. His mother and his sister died within a relatively short time. His first business venture Field abysmally. He then ran for state legislative and he lost. The same year he lost his job. The following year he borrowed some money from a friend to start a business. But he was bankrupt within a matter of months. Then his fiancée 
sadly, tragically died. He suffered a total mental breakdown and was bedridden for six months. He then ran for Speaker of, of State Legislation. And guess what? He lost. He then ran for Congress. Guess what? He lost. He ran again, and this time, guess what? He succeeded. But then he ran for re-election, and you know what happened? He lost. Then three of his four sons died. He then ran for the Senate, and he lost. He ran again, and he lost. But the following year was the year 1860. And in the year 1860, he was elected. Elected as the 16th president of the United States, going down in history as one of the nation's greatest, a game changer, a destiny maker, and a winner. History remembers him as Abraham Lincoln. And all because he had it in him to go again, and to go again, and to go again, and to go again. I want you to hold that story in your minds as we go on in our study. Now, they can't say that they weren't warned. Let me say that again. They can't say that they weren't warned. In Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 26, God said to his ancient people, Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but the curse, if instead they turned away from God's commandments. One of the forms that this curse would take would be God shutting the heavens so that no rain would fall on the land whatsoever. A few centuries later, the wicked Ahab came to Israel's throne and his even more wicked wife, Jezebel, the painted woman of the Old Testament. The sacred writer says of Ahab that he did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel who were before him. Rampant idolatry. Rampant, unchecked heathenism. The true worship of Jehovah suppressed and the people of God persecuted even to the point of death. But cometh the hour, cometh the man. God's man, Elijah, confronts this wicked king and he says these words, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, not weeks, not days, these years, except at my word. The New Testament book of James tells us that this drought lasted for three and a half long sweltering years. During that time, God hid Elijah at the brook Cherith, and he had the ravens bring him bread and meat morning and evening of each day while he drank from the brook. And when the brook dried up, he then directed Elijah to the village of Zarephtha, where he lodged with a widow and her son, again preserving them with flour and oil that miraculously each day replaced what had been used the day before. All the while, Ahab and his agents searched the length and the breadth of the nation for the elusive prophet, while the sun relentlessly baked the earth, the crops failed, the livestock perished, and the nation panted. Now we fast forward the tape. And Elijah engineers a meeting with Ahab. 
He proposes a challenge between the 450 false prophets of the heathen god Baal on Mount Carmel. Here's the deal. A bull each killed and cut in pieces and placed on the altar. And the God who answered by fire, he would be declared to be the true God. Now the priests of Baal, there was more of them, so they went first. From morning to noon and then from noon to evening, they chanted and they chanted, O Baal, hear us, O Baal, hear us. But there was no reply. There was no answer. There was no smoke, let alone fire. Then it was Elijah's turn. He carefully built the stone altar. He placed the wood on top. He sacrificed the bull. He cut it in pieces. And then, not once, not twice, but three times, he saturated the entire thing with water. Then the old hurry prophet He stood by the altar and he prays, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God. Then we are told that the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the sacrifice. And in response, the people shouted, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. False prophets were quickly seized and killed. And Elijah told Ahab, Guess what, Buster? Rain's coming. What did you say? Rain is coming. He told this wicked king, The rain is coming. Before he scurried back to his wife, The rain is coming. There's not a cloud in the sky. It's blue from this to this, from east to west, north to south. There's not a cloud in the sky, and he's got the cheek and the audacity to say, the rain's coming. Man's mad. Elijah and his servant, however, went further up Mount Carmel. Elijah again begins to pray. Ulster needs a man like Elijah tonight. And after all that shenanigans in Westminster today, Britain needs an Elijah. Britain needs an Elijah ministry. Oh, that Elam could be the Elijah ministry to the nation. Oh, one day there was no Elijah. The next day Elijah bursts onto the scene of time. Oh, one day that Elam would be God's Elijah and would burst, burst onto the center stage of the nation. Elijah and his servant went up to the top of Mount Carmel. They began to pray. Elijah's praying. And then he breaks off and he says to his servant, Go up now and look toward the sea. The young man immediately climbed to the summit and he looked toward the Mediterranean Mediterranean in the shimmering distance. He too scanned the sky in every direction. He looked north, he looked south, he looked east, he looked west. In every direction, guess what? Nothing. A big, fat zero. Nothing. He returned to Elijah and almost apologizing, he says, Elijah, there is nothing. Elijah looks up at him. He says two words. Go again. What? Go again. Now, I can see this young servant reasoning, but I've just been. I've just, I've just been to the top of Carmel. I've looked towards the sea. I've just been. And you know something? There was nothing. But Elijah says again, go again. And so he turns on his heels and he clambers up to the summit again and he he looks again. What am I 
ain't doing this for? I told him. I told him there's nothing. So again, he returns to the prophet. Well, Elijah, just like the last time, nothing. Elijah looks at him. He just says two words. Can you guess what, what the two words are? Are you sure? <laughs> he says, go again. But, 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 but Elijah, Elijah, listen, there's nothing. And listen, Elijah, for goodness sake, it's hot. And you want me to climb all the way up to the top again? Go again. Okay. He goes again. Can you believe it, brothers and sisters, tonight? Six times he puffs and he pants and he clambers up to the top. Listen, he's worn out. Imagine me saying to you, I want you to go up to the top of Slamish and come back down again. Yeah? Could you do it? Who reckons they could do it? Come on. Who reckons? Could you do it, young fella? I watched you playing the guitar there. Could you, could you climb up the top of Slamish and back down again? Who thinks they could? Yeah? Okay, come on. Let's go and do it now. <laughs> Can you imagine coming back down and me saying to you, I want you to go again? Yeah? Would you do it? No. <laughs> Can you imagine that six times, not once, not twice, not three, four, or five, six times he puffs, he pants, and he clambers up to the top, he's worn out. And six times it's the same. Nothing, no change, just as it was before. That's it. I'm done. But like a scratched record, Elijah says, what? What? Can't hear you? Go again. Listen, Elijah. It's just going to be the same. Look, Elijah, I know you're a man of God. and Elijah, look, I know that you hear from God, but, but I think this time you've misheard. Go again. He looks at Elijah. Really, if we're honest, he wants to tell Elijah what to do. And in fact, go and get himself an hour's servant. But he hears those words. Go again. Go again. Listen to me, brothers and sisters, tonight. It's true. Many of life's failures, many of life's failures are people who didn't realize how close they were to victory when they give up. And many people who feel in Christian work and who feel in the Christian life, it's because they haven't realized how close they are to victory when they throw in the towel. I believe there's people listening to me tonight and the word of the Lord to you tonight is this. Go again. Go again. Look at me, sister. Look at me, brother. Look at me, young person. Here's God's word to you tonight. Two words. I couldn't make it any simpler. Go again. Now, who needs to go again? Who needs to go again? Perhaps there's some pastor who's struggling with the cares and struggling with the demands and struggling with the shepherding of the flock, who's trying to pastor a church and he's under pressure and he feels, you know, why am I doing this? He needs to go again. Maybe there's some young Christian here tonight and right now you're finding it tough. You're finding it tough taking your stand. You're finding it tough living for God at school or at college or at university. And you're thinking of raising a white flag. Here's the word of the Lord for you tonight. Go again. Maybe there's some believer here tonight and you've been hurt. You've been hurt by another Christian. You've maybe been hurt by another church or God forbid, you've even been hurt by another minister. 
Listen to me, brother and sister, tonight. Listen carefully. God didn't bring you this far to only bring you this far. If you believe that, will you say amen? amen. How far have you come? How far have you come? God didn't bring you this far to just bring you this far and then to leave you. And so tonight, the Spirit of God says to you, brother, says to you, sister, says to whoever, go again. Who else needs to go again? Maybe there's a backslider here tonight. Maybe there's someone here who feel the Lord. You walked away from him. Deep down in your heart, you know it was wrong. Hear me. You need to come back to Christ. And you need to come back to Christ tonight. And you need to go again. Amen. Amen. Go again. Maybe there's a young couple here tonight. And you feel that your marriage is coming adrift at the seams. You feel that your marriage is running a track. Listen to me. You know what you need to do? You need to look into each other's eyes again. You need to remember your vows again, the vows you made to each other, the vows that you made before God, the vows that you made before your family and friends. You need to recall the great times that you had. And you need to take each other's hand again. Look into each other's eyes. And you need to go again. Amen. You need to go again. Listen, you're allowed to cry. Listen to me tonight. You're even allowed to scream. But you're not allowed to give up. So go again. Whoever you are. Maybe there's a child or maybe there's a parent or maybe there's a brother or a sister in Christ and somehow you've become estranged from them. Maybe you've tried to reach out. Maybe you've tried to be reconciled, but you were rejected. You know, brothers and sisters, thus says the Lord, go again. Pastor, they told me to clear off. Go again. They told me not to come back. Thus saith the Lord, go again. Brothers and sisters, we are called to be peacemakers and ourselves being reconciled to God. He calls us and he seeks us to go and be reconciled to others. So whoever that person is, you've become estranged with. Go again. Maybe there's someone here tonight and you were seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you were praying for it. Maybe you were wanting it. Maybe you were waiting for it. And there was no answer. So you stopped asking. Go again. Amen? Go again. Seek it again. Seek the gifts that you were asking for as well. Go again. Maybe you're here tonight and you were praying for a loved one's salvation, but there was nothing, there was no movement with them, and so you stop praying for them. It's easy to do. The Spirit of the Lord says, go again. The Spirit of the Lord says tonight, call a time of prayer and fasting in your own mind, in your own soul, in your own spirit, and go again and pray again. I've done it six times. Do it a seventh. Pastor, you want me to go again? I have failed. I've let the Lord down. I have fallen six times. That's okay. You can fall six times as long as you get up seven times. Hello? Hello? Go again. Brothers and sisters, maybe there's someone here tonight and maybe you were a Sunday school teacher. Maybe you were in the youth and you served. Maybe you served in some other capacity, but, but you got discouraged. Listen, I want to tell you something. It's easy to get discouraged in God's work. Not right, Pastor Denver. It's dead easy, isn't it? We get more kicks than we do pats on the back. Isn't that right? That's right. Some homes I go to visit, I put a telephone directly down the back of my trousers before I go in. <laughs> Maybe you were a Sunday school teacher. Maybe you served in some capacity, but you got the scurries and you stepped down. 
Look at me. Go again. Do you hear me? Go again. You used to come to the prayer meeting. You used to come to the Bible study, but for some reason you got in the rut and you no longer come. Brother, sister, go again. Pastor David, I feel God. Pastor David, I got burned. Am I speaking to somebody tonight and you got burned? And you've surrendered and you've yielded and you've thrown in the tile? Pastor, I got burned. Look at me. Has no one ever told you that the phoenix emerges from the ashes and the fire? Hello? Call it baggy. Hundred years. Oh, magic. Sounds good, doesn't it? I thank God tonight. I played a tiny, 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 tiny little part in it. I thank God for that tiny, tiny part. And you know, I was here last night. And see, last night it was just what I needed for my own soul. I wouldn't have missed last night for the world. I came in here the first time in nine years. I think I was here one time for, for a funeral. I'm just, you're just so busy. And I came in last night and I sat at the back. And listen, it was just a piece of heaven for my soul. And you know, I rejoice with you tonight. I mean that, I rejoice with you. I'm so proud of you, I love you. A hundred years, great But have you got it in you to go again? Denver, have you got it in you to go again? John Little, we used to play football together. I used to kick him. <laughs> and he kicked me back. <laughs> John, have you got it in you to go again? Ali, well, forget about the football team you support. <laughs> Alistair, have you got it in you, lad, to go again? Robin, where's Robin? Where are you hiding, Robin? Where are you hiding? Robin, have you got it in you to go again? Jimmy, to love my pal. Jimmy. Have you got it in you, mate, to go again? Walter, your book's brilliant. You didn't sign it for me, but you rascal. <laughs> Walter, have you got it in you? And I know you're getting on in years. God's been good to you. Walter, have you got it in you to go again? Philip Brown. First day I was here, Dawn and I, we were at Philip and Irene's house for Sunday dinner. Remembered as well. Philip Brown, have you got it in you to go again? Your sidekick next to you, Mr. Swan, have you got it in you to go again? Has this session tonight got it in them? To go again? Has Cully, Becky, Elam got it in them to go again? Do you remember the nights in the community center and the estate? Do you remember the souls that were saved? Do you remember the people that were reached? Have you got it in you to go again? Oh, Cully, Becky, Elam tonight, go again. Oh, but Pastor David, times are different. People aren't interested the way they used to be. Listen to me tonight. Go again. Or are you just going to be content with rereading the previous chapters instead of getting down to writing the next chapters? Call it back Elam. You know what my prayer is for you? That your best days are not behind you, but that your best days are still in front of you. Amen tonight. Come on, who believes that tonight? I pray tonight that your best days are still in front of you. 
And so I say to you, go to that community center again. Go again. They won't let us have it. Go again. Bribe them, blackmail them, whatever you have to do. Do you remember how you used to knock the doors around the estates? Go again. Oh, Pastor, we've done it. It's hard. Go again. We've done it six times. Go a seventh time. Go again. Can you hear the Spirit tonight calling you, Elam? Can you hear the Spirit calling you tonight? Go again. Go again. So for the seventh time, he climbs that mountain to the top. <laughs> he looks. The sky is clear. Beautiful royal blue as far as the eye can see. Then he stops. He stares. <laughs> he sees the tiniest cloud he's ever seen. The size of a man's hand arising out of the sea and hanging in the sky. And he turns on his heels and as fast as his legs would carry him, he runs back to Elijah. Elijah, Elijah, guess what? There is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. Brothers and sisters, Two simple little words. Go again. God, I believe, is going to allow a cloud. Maybe just initially the size of a man's hand. But that is the foretaste. That is the forerunner. Because soon the sky is going to become black with clouds. And the sound of abundance of rain. Hallelujah. And so I ask the question again tonight as I finish. Have you got it in you to go again? Anybody can throw in the towel. Anybody can raise a white flag and call it a day. Anybody can do that. Have you got it in you to grit your teeth? Have you got it in you to get on your knees and like Elijah, put your head between your knees and cry and say, Lord, send us a move of God. Go again. Go again. Denver, Session, members, friends of this lovely church. Go again. You maybe don't think you have it in you to go again. Pastor, I would love to go again, but I haven't got it in me. I've been hurt. I've been disillusioned. I've been, I've been disappointed. You maybe feel that you don't have it in you to go again, but hear me. You have. How do you know? Did you forget the verses we read at the start? You've got it in you. Look at me. You've got it in you to go again. Paul says in that third chapter of Ephesians, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Now here it is. According to the what? The power. Where? That works. Where? In where? Us. That power to go again is in you. That power to go again is in you. Listen, it has always been in you. The power to go again. So what are you waiting for? Go again. And everybody said, come on. And everybody said, 
Come on, shout amen. amen. Go again. What are you waiting for? To him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask or think according to the power that works in us. That power is there. That power to go again. Cully Becky, go again. I pray, and I mean this from the depths of my heart, I pray your best days are yet to be. I pray there's another book coming, and it's a better book as well, and you write it. You hear me? <laughs> you don't be popping off the glory until you write the next book. <laughs> Go again. Go again. Would you let me do something? I was lying on top of the bed this afternoon reading over the notes, getting them in my head. And I felt this just come into my spirit. You know what I would love to do if you let me? Could I ask the pastor of this church to come up here? And could I ask the session all to come up here? Could you do that for me? I'm not going to humiliate you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to pick your pockets, promise. Would you come up? Come on up now, would you? Come on up. Come on, folks. Listen, will you encourage them as to come up? Come on. Now, I want you all to stand too. Jesus. Not miss the Lord. Come on, Philip Brown. Get over here. Praise God. Come on. Praise God. Get up here. Bless the Lord. Don't be telling me no. Or I'll set our I'll set our ring on you. <laughs> Let's go. Jesus. Church is only as good as its leaders. These men are in the front row with a cold face. They need your prayers and your support and your love and your encouragement. And these guys need to know that you're behind them 150%. Jesus. And I'm going to pray. Listen, see me, I'm nothing. I'm just an old sinner saved by grace, just like all of us. But to see this crowd here, I love them. I mean that, I love them with all my heart. And I want to pray for them. Come on over here, Father. Come on, come on, Walter. Come on, let's all pray together, shall we? Praise God. Heavenly Father, in the lovely name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. I thank you for every man that you have called to lead this church. Jesus. I thank you for Pastor Denver. We love him in the Lord. I thank you for this session. Lord, we have so many memories. We have laughed together. We have cried at times together. Jesus. Lord, I love them. Jesus. And I ask you, gracious Lord, will you give them a measure of the Holy thank Spirit? You, Lord. Thank you, Even Lord. right now, will you come upon them? Praise and will you give them the determination? Will you Jesus. give them the courage Jesus, and the faith Lord. and the belief to go again? Thank you, Lord. And I pray, Lord, for every member and friend of this church. Lord, I pray, help them to believe Father, in themselves Father. because you believe in them, Lord. Jesus. And I pray that Jesus. together they'll go again. Thank you. And I pray, Lord God, oh, let the best Thank days you. be yet to come. Yes. Lord, we'll love you tonight. We'll bless you. Thank Jesus. you for saving us. Yes, Thank Lord. you for keeping us, Praise Lord. God. Thank you, gracious Thank you. Lord, that our love is Jesus. oft times low, but Jesus. your love never fails. Right, Lord, lead us all on yourself. Thank you, Father. Jesus precious Thank name. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Everybody said, Amen. 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 Let's take our seats. I'm handing it over to the boss. Amen. <laughs>